Alright guys, welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different. We're not catching fish in this one. This video is going to be all about what we need to be fishing in August. Because August, it's tough. Extreme heat, even up north here in Pennsylvania, it gets super tough here too. But I can only imagine what it's like down south right now in this super heat. But yeah, these are going to be some baits. I'm going to start from morning go all the way up to night and give you some baits that I would use throughout the day during August and not only maybe even beginning of September when it's still hot outside and stuff but yeah now let's get into these baits all right guys so the first one we're going to be talking about is in the morning so the morning is going to probably be the best bite time the earlier you get there the best but in the morning top water top water top water so something maybe like a nice walking bait with some rattles in it. Super good, super good, always. Um, little, oh, wow, can't get it out now, but little poppers and everything. These things work amazing in the morning. Um, especially the frog. We're gonna just wanna start using the frog if it's early in the morning this time of year. Get tons of bites on it. Um, I technically, I normally do wanna use like a popping frog, not just, I have one right here. Um, a normal frog because I don't like the action that this is making in the water. I want a big pop, like pop in the water that's going to disperse water and hopefully piss off a fish enough to get a bite, you know what I mean? But yeah, other than that, top water in the morning, what I'm throwing is a medium heavy, um, pulled up 30 pound braid. I don't really work, and up here in PA, they don't really care about. It's just straight braid to the line. Um, I'm using the 7 2 to 1 gear ratio because that way I can crank it in. I really have to. But I have an SLX DC for this and I can cast this whale across the pond. And set hooks me very far away if I really have to. That's why I really prefer the SLX DC for my topwater rod. But other than that, this is a seven foot, just normal, medium, heavy, and it gets the job done on top water. I can tell you that right now. But top water in the morning is what you're gonna want to be fishing. All right, guys. Well, the next bait we're going. Well, I guess not next bait, but baits. We are going to talk about when we're getting into when it's starting to get really hot outside during that day, and the fish just stop biting. They're gonna be a little bit deeper, but you're gonna be able to catch them on certain things if you make them commit. You don't want a smaller meal. They're gonna want something they can commit to and not have to eat a while again for. So you're gonna wanna fish something a lot bigger. So first thing I'm gonna tell you is a big jig. So this is a perfect time to use a big jig. Not only that, this is, this is actually a swim jig I have tied on to my jigging rod right now. But even the uh, normal jig, a flipping jig or football jig, uh, whatever you want to use is going to be great during this time in deeper water. May, this is going to have to be on rock, more rocky uh, with the jigs. The swim jig, however, you can keep big and you can go through all your brush that you want. And it's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing this time of year, especially deeper water. Honestly, jigging, people hate it because not many people caught fish on jigs. But honestly, once you get confidence in these things, there's literally nothing better I could ever ask for other than, I guess, catching a fish every cast. But these things are fish producers all year round, especially the big ones in the heat of the summer because the bass are a lot more active. Oh, well, their metabolism, I guess, is more active. So that's what you really want to be fishing is bigger things because they're only going to bite. Uh, they're not going to go for the smaller baits, if that makes sense. But yeah. Next bait we are going to talk about, I guess you can relate it with the jig, but we're just talking about a standard Texas rig, right? Just a normal Texas rig, wherever you want. I'm using a 5 odd hook uh, with a 3 8 ounce sinker on top of it. That way I can really get the most out of what I need for the Texas rig. I can get it to the bottom real quick, I can let it sit there, I can jerk it up and down if I really will need to. But that's really what I'm gonna be doing. I mean, again, bigger base. We're not going for smaller, um, 
soft plastics. I don't think I have to tell you what a Sanko, a Craw, or a Vandito bug. I would hope you guys know that. But you're gonna w definitely want to be big and big soft plastic. A Mondo worm is perfect. A ginormous worm is perfect this time of year. That's why I'm using a five eye hook. That way it can really up the size of what I'm really gonna be using out there and not worry about uh, not getting a decent hook set on it. Well, I'm not worried ever when I get a bite on one of these bigger baits. Um, so bo going back, let's talk about what exactly the, um, what power rods and everything I'm going to be using. So for the jig, you're gonna definitely wanna be using heavy. That way you can rip it through all the weeds you want. So this is a heavy, this is a heavy favor rod, honestly, actually. And this is a Fluger Resident XT bait casting reel. Now this thing is definitely good. This is only a hundred dollar reel. Uh, okay. But this is about a two hundred dollar combo. It's definitely worth it. Uh, I'm using seven three uh, heavy, or is this an extra heavy? No, so this is just a 7.3 heavy. This is perfect for jigs. Um, you can cast them far and still get a good hook set because you got to get it through that weed guard. But for the normal Texas rig, honestly, the normal Texas rig. So I'm using, this is a 7.2 medium heavy Guggen squad rod. Um, this is the Guggen go-to, which is awesome. You can use a ton of baits on this. But this is down to, I'm using 20 pounds uh fluorocarbon line on both of these actually both the jigging and this but honestly i'm using just a normal slx i'm not using the slx dc on this one so the normal slx i feel like is better at i'm not gonna have to cast this as far if that makes more sense so i don't really need the extra power i need more of the drag in this one there's more gonna be a lot more drag i, I don't know something about the dc reels there's just not as much drag I don't, I don't know how they have to make them or not, but this has an extra two pounds of drag. I, I, I mean, it's your preference. The normal SLX is gonna cast just as far, but it can backlash. That's the only difference between them. But the SLX DC does still have my heart. But yeah, that's about it for midday. Oh no, it's not actually. I totally forgot. So now. You can't get them to bite. Trying everything, they won't bite, right? We're gonna wanna switch over to the spinning rod and we're gonna wanna throw a wacky rig. So the wacky rig is going to do its job at this time of the year. Honestly, it's a great bait. Uh, it produces bites all the time. This is something, if you're not catching them on there but you know they're out there, this is what you're gonna wanna throw. This, the way it sinks down to the bottom and flutters, just triggers bites. You're gonna want to do this on your spinning rod though. This is not for your bait casting. Um, spinning rod, I'm, I'm probably using about 10 pound braid to about 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then I'm probably still, a me I'm gonna use a medium heavy spinning rod. Uh, 3000 series spinning reel. Doesn't matter which brand. There's tons of brands out there. Honestly, I use the Fluger Presidents. Uh, actually for most of my spinning reels as well as one of my bait casts with us the XT but yeah you can't get bites you're gonna want to use a wacky rig at this time of the year so yeah go fish those hopefully you catch some fish on those ones all right so it's getting late it's getting later uh evening sun's starting to go down and everything we're gonna want to attract attention to our baits more and ever because they're gonna be less visible, right? So, first thing I'm gonna start throwing as soon as the sun starts going down. Chatterbait. Now, trailers. Use whatever trailer you want. You're gonna have to try many craws, bugs. I personally have a, a little fluke on the back of mine because when this thing is swimming, its tail is flicking. And it just looks so juicy. Flukes are probably my favorite soft plastic of all time anyways. And using them on the back of a bladed jig, I mean, I, I personally, my favorite brand is the Google Squad. So, um, I know Z-Man chatterbaits are good, but honestly, I've gotten the best bites 
on my Guggen Squad one. Not saying I haven't caught big fish on the other ones. This is my favorite one. Now going back to what we're gonna wanna throw these baits on for this is, this is an SLX DC, right? To a loose TPX one. Um, this is loose 2PX1 Torden bait casting rod. Now, this is all about medium heavy. This is a lot stiffer of medium heavy. So this is going to be great for feeling this and it's not going to be dropping as much. So that's what you're really going to want. Alright guys, so the last bait we're going to be using is the square bell crankbait. It's more in the evening. This, I've, I've, people might disagree with me in the evening, but I've caught a ton of fish on this in the evening. It's a great search bait. The square bill is not going to have it getting down into the rocks and everything, but it's going to go through the middle of the water column, and you're going to want to match your forage, but this bait kills at night for me. I'm, that's a tip I'm going to give all of you guys, to try this at night, because this has killed fish for me for a while now at night. Now, good luck out there. It's hot out. Stay hydrated, and keep catching fish, and I will see you guys in the next video.